Hi, everyone. Welcome to Cookville Now, your podcast about the people, businesses, and places that make Cookville and the Upper Cumberlands what it is today. I am Herbert Williams, your host, and my co-host, lovely Clarissa. Thank you. Um, Today, we are meeting with candidates, and we have been to most of the City Council Meet the Candidate forums, and we have heard many of the questions over and over but they're not always asked of every candidate. So we are going over a list of questions with every candidate, and we are giving every candidate the same opportunity to answer with about the same time frame. We're trying to stay in that 20 to 30 minute range and, um, you know, just kind of tackling a couple of these topics that some of you have mentioned to us. We've heard this in different circles and trying to just narrow the focus, but get good, genuine responses from everyone. So welcome, Luke. Thank you. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? All right. Well, born and raised um, in Cookville, my uh, dad and my grandpa, they built a lot of homes here, my uncle. And so uh, they built, Wheeler. if you remember Wheeler Skating Rink, they they built that years ago where I think it was at Bethel is now. Um, and then my mom, we're from the All Good, they're from the All Good area. My grandpa used to have a shuttle mill there, kind of like a Kind of like a big, what, Bigfoot Martin. Most people know Bigfoot Martin and what they have with the log companies. It was a little thing like that. Um, but went to all good school, uh, the old all good school. And uh, once we transitioned, we moved to Rickman. I was forced to move. That's what I always tell people. <laughs> I didn't have an option. I was in seventh grade. So then we went we there. Rickman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, hey, loved it. Played basketball in Rickman and played basketball at Livingston Academy and soccer. And um, then – Got accepted to Tech. I really didn't want to go anywhere else. I wanted to stay around here. And so got accepted to Tech. And I did two and a half years of um, special ed, special education. Mm-hmm. And then after that, I transitioned to psychology just because I felt that was more of the direction I needed to go. And lo and behold, everything I've done since then, uh, working at Plateau Mental Health, working at the Rescue Mission, uh, working with Upcoming Family Justice Center, and working with homelessness, substance abuse, all of that kind of has really I can tell okay that's why I needed to do that um married uh, got two go- wonderful kids a beautiful wife my boy turns eight next Wednesday um so my little girl just turned three uh, back in May so I just you know go to church here we're youth leaders me and my wife are uh, we've been doing that for this was going on I think this is our 10 year anniversary and so we're deacons at our church uh, so yeah that's a little bit about me there that's- yeah that's good. <clears throat> well, we'll start off by asking you the simple question okay. probably you hear a lot. Why are you running? <laughs> Why am I? Yeah, I've had a lot of people. <clears throat> Why are you that crazy? What are you thinking? <laughs> you know, uh, I, I've served the community for over 10 years in different forms like we just talked about. With When I was at Plateau, I did PATH, which is a homeless outreach, mental health. I've worked with the churches a lot around here. I've just always wanted to give back. My <laughs> I tell people, my dad showed me hard work, and you finish what you start, and you you committed. My mom showed me caring. Uh, my mom was, in the, she worked in kind of with the nursing home stuff like that. And then she was a teacher at All Good, and then she just retired about two years ago from the police department as a dispatcher. So it's always her thing's always been about caring, and so putting those two together, the hard hard work and caring. I, that's just what's driven me to that next level. And the city has called me upon many times to ask questions regarding whatever it may be, homeless, stuff like the housing. And so I just thought, well, it's time to put my name in in the race and let's see how this goes. Well, let's jump right into some questions and let's get right into transportation. Topic of everyone's, <laughs> yeah. uh, it didn't matter if you're at the grocery store or wherever you yeah. are, you're hearing about congested traffic, yeah. potholes, how the roads are going to be laid out. So what would you say that you could do to improve that situation? If I had a company, go out there and pave it, right? <laughs> uh, uh, and fix it. Um, we got to continue working with TDOT and the state, you know, talking with like Ryan Williams, these guys. And I've got some friends over at TDOT and maybe just being able to talk with them and say, where are we at on the list? <laughs> um, I, we just got to continue doing that, no doubt with, the increase of traffic and everything, it just keeps putting a wear and tear on all this. A lot of the roads that we have issues with are obviously not technically ours. So 
we just got to continue doing that. I wish it was a quick all fix all, but there's there's a lot involved in it, and there's a lot of a lot of need that's out there, even across the state. In this, mm-hmm. uh, we used Tennessee used to be we used to have the best roads, and you could tell when you got to Georgia or tell when you got because you had that. Now you have it here, and I don't I don't I don't like that. So I think the continuing of working with. Every, uh, T dot and all them and just and voicing. Look, we've had a lot of movement here, and we've had a lot. Look, we, we a lot of people are moving to this area, so maybe they need to relook and re if they can focus on the Upper Cumberland, especially Putnam uh, Putnam County and Cookville being the hub, and seeing if they can help us a little quicker. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, let's transition gears a little bit. We we do know a lot of people are moving to this area. It continues yeah. to, to just grow so fast. And health care is one topic that a lot of people talk about, right. um, especially with people that are moving here as a retiree. Mm-hmm. Um, you have quality of life issues that revolve around that. And the city actually owns Cookville Regional Medical Center. Right. Um, so over the past couple of years, we've encountered the tornado, mm-hmm. the pandemic, staffing issues, how does the city owning the hospital help Cookville? And secondly, um, how does that contribute to the tax base? Well, you know, one thing I think with us owning it, and it's very unique. Uh, it, we are in more of a unique place because we still own it, which I think is really good because it keeps costs down. It mm-hmm. keeps, it, it, we have buy-in. If we sell it, we don't have much buy-in as a community. We kind of, our mouths will kind of get muted a little bit right Mm -hmm. and i think we need to continue that and everything with the tornado with the pandemic and everything everywhere's hurting for jobs everywhere's hurting for all that and so hopefully with this new team that they can it's going to take some years to get this turned i think just because of everything that's gone on i mean we're, we're we're in a uphill battle right now especially with inflation and there's a lot that's coming against us now when it comes to the taxes, and let's see this second question here: How does this directly attribute to the tax? You know, if we sell it, there's a good chance, you know, that that could increase a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think the city does a fantastic job at keeping the taxes down, and the hospital. I know there's, you know, there's a lot of controversy with some of this stuff, but we got to look at our board members over there and work with them and say, all right, because they have buy-in, they're community people. Mm-hmm. And continue working with them and continue working with the suite over there and Paul and Ricky and all them and say, all right, where are we missing? What do we need? How can we help? And I think we continue doing that and keeping it what it is. I think we got to keep it with us because that keeps the cost way down. And right now, Cookville is continuing to grow. Everything is moving in the right direction. We've got a really strong economy. But if things were to change... We've came up with three options that we're asking. Um, so if you had to make cuts, would you, number one, um, scale back services, right. number two, cut staff, or number three, increase taxes? <laughs> well, we already have a staff shortage, so we don't need to do that, right? And nobody likes increased taxes, so mm-hmm. that would be like your last option. <laughs> it's like with my own personal budget. Um, what I have to do is I have to cut certain things. Now, does that mean we cut, we cut, what is it that we cut? Um, we scale back services. It may be the amount we, it, it may be amounts that we do. It may be, we can't do this this time. And I have to do that with my budget, especially with inflation. Inflation, I think, is costing somewhere between 350 to $400 extra a month. So the other thing is being pretty conservative, right? And all right, let's try not to spend as much, obviously, and let's make sure our budgets are where they need to be, maybe a little lower and then if if we have the extra praise god if we don't Mm -hmm. then we're you know we i think we'll be in a good spot but our department heads do a fantastic job at that i mean there's that's why we hired them Mm -hmm. that's why we have james mills you know that's why he just i mean shout out to him hey i think he hates these shout outs every (laughs) now and then but james has done a really good job and you know i think they just awarded him um even for his hard work and dedication i know he loves the city too so working with him and the and, and the uh, the department heads, I think if we had to do anything, I would say we, we would have to cut back and just be conservative. And I had to do that with my own. Um, so I don't think it's I don't think we should charge the community or the, the taxpayer or cut, because then if we cut now, we put them in a bad spot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We exactly. Put, we put that person in a bad spot. But if we increase taxes, then we put a lot of people in a bad spot. So we just need to 
conserve and cut and trim the fat, if I will, you know. Well, as you know, homelessness continues to be a growing issue in Cookville, in Putnam County in the whole. What would you do or what do you think some of the things that could be put in place to help solve that problem? Well, that's a touchy one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think Sheriff Ferris and the city both have done a decent job. I think Sheriff Ferris has done a decent job with what he's doing. Of course, I went with him and uh, down there with the new law that just passed. And a lot of people get upset about that law because they think it's a felony on homeless. But that goes back to some riots back in 2020 when they then made it a law not to be on the state capitol. Mm -hmm. And so now that has just come into this as well. So, um, you know, we got to have that checks and balance. We got to have those laws there. And we got landowners who are upset um, about some things. We have a few landowners that don't matter if people are where they're at. And, you know, if they if they don't, then, hey, that's okay. But that's that's that landowner's. It's his property. He can do with it what he wants. And if he wants people on there, and you know, we could go out and help him there. But one thing that with that going on right now and putting that checks and balance in, that will help to see who really is homeless versus who's out there abusing the homeless situation to obtain funding, to obtain resources and funding and money and not change. Right. Um, Cause I see both. I work mm-hmm. in home. I've been working in homeless 10 plus years. So I see both sides uh, we spend a lot more energy and time on individuals who are just going around asking for whatever. Um, the The average homeless person uh, nationally will tr- cost the city, the taxpayer, fifteen thousand to thirty thousand dollars a year. And there's, you know, they they're projecting we have about fifty or sixty that's out there. So we got to do. We we look at doing that. But what would I do? Well, we're already doing some stuff. We already got a group of people. We're meeting and saying, how can we fix this? Um, and there's some stuff that uh, James Mills has talked to me about and some ideas. And so we've got a group of individuals, uh, kind of like a chain, mm-hmm. that we're trying to put together. And so we're already working on these things because we know if we're not careful, it's going to get where the housing market, the rental. Oh, yeah. So I've, I've had, I think I've had 10, 15 phone calls just today alone about I need help with housing. I need help with housing. I'm, I'm homeless. I'm this. I'm that. So, uh so I would already, I'm, we're already working on that. I'm already trying to do that. And I know the city council would want to, and they've, they've done their part in the past as well, uh, working with us where I work right now. So everybody's doing a good job. It's just a very hard thing to tackle. Mm-hmm. So, but we, there's some ideas and there's some more people out there that it's, we want to bring It's multifaceted. In. It is for multifaceted sure. for sure. So as we continue down the path of growth, mm-hmm. there's all kinds of things that happen. Everybody's excited about yeah. growth. Yeah. Uh, new opportunities that comes with it. But on the flip side of that, how do we control the growth? And I don't know if control the growth is a good way to put it, but how do we how do we look that, at that and tackle that without impacting the charm of yeah. the city that we have? Yeah, if you say tackle the growth, people think you mean you're against growth. So. <laughs> I'm not against growth. No, no, not against. <laughs> it's just smart growth. There's yes. smart growth. Smart. It's strategic. strategic planning. There's, okay, do we really need that here? Do we really want that here? What's the what's it going to do for our community? What's it actually going to add? Is it going to add value to the community, or is it what what is it? So we got to look at that. It is that's a two edged sword, because um, we have grown drastically. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we got to look at our infrastructure. We got to look at that. We we've got some things that are not probably where they need to be mm-hmm. uh, compared to the growth we have. And I, I've been very vocal about you know, the police department and mm-hmm. not having enough police officers and. You know, if we're going to do the whole, if we're going to build out tech, which I'm totally for building out, you know, getting that, getting T, uh, TWS AA in, I think it's fun. It's exciting to see that. I'm a sports fan, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but if we're going to look at doing the aquatic center, that that's going to take more manpower. Mm-hmm. And it, it brings a lot in, brings a lot of revenue in and all that. But what are we going to do? And I think we need to look at infrastructure. And we got inflation right now, so we need to, we need to be smart with what we're doing and make sure we don't put ourselves in a deeper hole. We're not in a hole, so I don't want anybody to take that out of context. <laughs> but because we're doing really well, James and all those guys, they do fantastic mm-hmm. with what we have, and we're very resourceful. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, we need so to you don't want stuff. us to start digging a hole? No, <laughs> no, no. And, and you know, we got we got a lot of interest that's come, wanting to come to Cookville, so we just need to make sure that we're prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I think it is a double edged sword, and not everybody's going to be happy with whatever's decided. And that, but that's the beauty in the community, you know, and. 
we hopefully we get to talk with those individuals and hear their reasoning and rhymes and move forward with them and hopefully we can assure them in the growth and mm-hmm. but going back to strategic we got to be strategic in what we do mm-hmm So um, one of the things that we did when we started our company about seven or eight years ago is we wanted to make sure that our Christian principles, everything was based on that and built on that. One of the things that we've continuously heard as we have gone to the Meet the Candidate uh, forums is everyone talks about praying and their faith. We just want to know, like, where do you stand with your faith? What's it rooted in? Because one of the things that absolutely drives me crazy is if I hear someone talk about being a Christian, and it serves the purpose of that time. Yeah. But I, I, I'm a fourth generation Baptist preacher's daughter, so yeah. I was raised in church. But I have friends that are atheist and agnostic, sure. and we agree to disagree. Yeah. But we, we really want to know, like, tell us more about your faith. Boy, we, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I grew up in church. Um, I grew up. I got away from God when I was in high school. I think a lot of kids do that, um, but I had a praying mama, mm-hmm. and uh, always good, always good, and a praying mom no matter what. There was a tough spot in my life, uh, just being stupid kid, and um, I, but I had this des- when I was younger. I had this desire. I remember driving down one eleven, and there's the Bible College sign right there, right before you get off to Kroger, and I was playing sports, and I said, "Mom, I don't." This was before I, I just had a bad experience but I said mom I don't know if I want to go to Bible college or if I want to play sport Let's play basketball somewhere in college and she's like well you just got to figure that out said, yeah well thanks mom uh, <laughs> that's what you're here for but you know I've always felt this calling I've always felt this pull and um and lo and behold I I get my life back in order back when I was in college and uh and I met my wife in college and uh she was going to where we go to church now, and so I said, "I need, I want to go. I need to get back in." And I got back in, and it wasn't two years later. We were youth leaders, and uh, now we're, we wasn't a year or two after that we became deacons. So the value of my Christian walk it over it overlooks, and it it's everything I do is based on that. Even when if we want to say politics, mm-hmm. I. It's to God first and then my party. It's mm-hmm. not to the party, then my God. Um, and if I lose friends over that, that's what it is. But I, I serve God, and every decision I will be making will be based on my, my beliefs and my and what I see in the Bible. Yes. You know, I see, you, if we want to go way back, I always see Moses. Uh, I see, um, I see, yeah, Moses as a, I think, I'm like Noah, not, not Noah, but sorry. But I see Moses as God, God told you, you can't do all this on your own. You got to have people under you. See, Mm -hmm. our first president, you know, if you look at it that way, Mm -hmm. David was involved in politics. He was a king. Mm -hmm. We had the judges. Jesus was before Pontius Pilate. So I want to be involved. And that's one thing, one reason I'm running, because it's honestly, I'm not, we have good Christian people um, that are running all over, not just here, but all over. But we need people who are not going to waver in their faith. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't, I'm not saying anybody won't, but I can tell you I won't. And, and there's nothing that can, there's nobody's friendship. There's nobody's support or anything that will, that will sway me. As long as if it's in the Bible, that's what I'm going with. Well, good. And I'll well, stick to that. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back. We put your company in front of the right audience. Our services include website creation, search engine optimization, search engine management, social media management, geofencing, video production, podcasts, and more. We can help you get found easy and affordable. We are your partner. We work with you as your team, giving you the best option for marketing. Stop by today, email us, or call us at 931-854-1313. Welcome back. So let's talk about the mayor's position. All right. So currently, um, the way that everything Mm -hmm. historically has been chosen is the person who receives the most votes is the mayor. But then there's also discussion about whether this should be a standalone position. Sure. And I know the council votes on all this and all that, but where do you think that should come down? You know, so I I don't know if I have a different perspective the way I look at it, but I like the way we do it. Um, Because it really shows you what the community wants, right? Um, Now, 
if you're talking about should it be a separate standalone and then it's not a full-time position, it's just you can run for mayor. You know, if, if that's what the council would want to decide, then you have people running for mayor. But then what happens to the one who loses? Do they get to roll on to – do they become vice mayor? Do they roll and get to run? Do you have like a – do you have a, a, a voting time period that's just for the mayors and then whoever loses gets to run for – city council you know what what does that look like how do we break that down um because if we don't do something like that and you have two people run ones out then you might lose a very valuable individual yes and so i don't like that um unless there's a, some way we could figure that out now if it's a full-time position um james mills does a fantastic job you know um i don't know why we'd want to add another position plus then if that's a position that things could change. People could change. Personnel could change. Don't think we want that because you're doing that every four years. And yeah. let's face it, this is what happens with this nation. Right? It's every four years something you just keep stirring. So yes. I, I, I like the way it is personally. Yes, you need consistency. Consistency, yeah. We often hear people talk about what they wish they had in Cookville or what they'd like to have in Cookville. Yeah. For example, Target or Home Depot. What is something you'd like to see come to Cookville? My wife says Target. Um, I agree. Well, I'm like, <laughs> but you talk about how you like to, you like the experience of traveling. True. So, and like, I mean, hey, if Target comes, that be that would be a big, huge blessing, right? Home Depot, mm-hmm. I would like that. Uh, you oh, know, yeah. Home Depot, because it's man's, it's man's store. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's. I'm a big golfer, and top, that Top Golf is getting really big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, do we need it, right? Uh, if it's just like if we could throw anything in there and nobody, it wouldn't hurt anything, it didn't cause increase in this. To me, Top Golf's a lot of fun. Um, it just seems fun. But again, I can go to somewhere and do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if I really wanted something, hmm, I, I would have to say I would want uh, there's I would want something for my kids mm-hmm. uh because we we got a lot of we got the jump house we got all that stuff but i i don't know like a just something that they could get involved in or maybe a bigger complex that we could have uh soccer's growing my kid my boy plays soccer my little girl wants to play soccer and uh, you know ymca fields are crammed it's crammed over at uh, cane creek i don't know just a complex or something like that that could be versatile and we could use for different things i that may be something that I would love to see, but I'm a sports guy, so I'd like to have that, maybe. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> hey, here's a question i like to ask everybody. Sure. What did your family think, specifically your wife, when yeah. you decided you were going to run for council, and why did you Why did you do it? So I have – I've talked about this for, let's see, going on the last two terms. Uh, me and my wife have talked about it, and we just didn't feel right at that time. I'm, I'm 37. And so I'd been what, 29 at that time, the first go around and still young. Um, and we, it just wasn't right where our kids were still, our kids are young, but we were just having one and don't want to add that stress on and mm-hmm. not the stress of that, but just a lot going on. My wife was a school teacher at that time. Uh, she actually has now come home to help do this. Uh, we really feel like this is the next step in our life to serve our community more. So she's come home. We're at a place that we can do that, and um, she's uh, going to homeschool. Uh, she's actually talked about maybe even doing running later on, looking at – she'll hurt me when she if she hears this. I hope she don't hear this. But, <laughs> but she's talked about maybe even the school board because she has seen – she's been on the inside, saw some stuff, um, and she wants to be on the other side to make sure things don't go the way things go or voice. She's a teacher. She's the next teacher, so she could say, she could have that voice to say, give some stuff back to our principal, give some give some back to our teacher, because mm-hmm. honestly, our teacher's hands are tied sometimes, seems like. So anyway, but so we talked about it even more, and we just felt like this was the time that was right. Uh, we were financially at a place we could do it, and we love to serve our community. We love to be involved in the community, and so it's that's just the next step for us, and we feel that's the next step is doing this for four years, and hopefully – for another four if, if we're blessed enough to do it great well we all know that cookville is awesome mm-hmm. and uh-huh. everybody yeah. loves to anytime that you have somebody that comes to cookville they're like this is a great town yep. but there are certain things that we all really like um and there's certain things that 
our favorites for everyone, yeah. whether it's a restaurant, a destination, a event. You know, we, we love going over to Dogwood Park. Yeah. There's lots and lots of good things around Cookville. What's your favorite? If you said this, this is what I think of when I think of Cookville, this is oh, my favorite. I was going to say uh, Tex Golf Course. Um, <laughs> that's one of my um, But Lazy Cow. You know, we go there a lot. My kids love it, or and they love um, the. Uh, oh, it's right below us there. We live on Tenth Street. The Lord, they're gonna hate me because I can't remember the name. But uh, the uh, little snow cone. Oh yeah, pelicans. Uh, pelicans, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah. They we walk there sometimes. My kids love that. They love to go there. So those little I look, stuff like that with my kids. Those are some of my favorites. And obviously, the downtown with all the the fine dining, the eating. Mm-hmm. I love a lot of those places. There ain't one I can't say I don't like. So, um, it's, it's different. It's unique. And it's, it's, it's not like the other side of town on interstate drive. Um, but I, I much rather enjoy these. We are definitely blessed to have a lot of options. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. We have a lot of options. We've got a lot of coffee shops, you know, that's got a lot of, we, I just noticed, I was just thinking about those and, but it's, they're all unique. They're all different, which Mm -hmm. is really cool. So they, nothing tastes the same to me. And so that's good to see how different people do things. So mm-hmm. I like that. Well, looking back at the last few Meet the Candidate forums, mm-hmm. is there a question that would help tell people about you that you wish you had been asked? I, you know, honestly, I don't know. I think everybody <clears throat> kind of knows I'm the homeless guy. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have questions outside of that. So people could really see who I am. There's more to me than just that. Mm -hmm. Um, That I'm just not all about that. But I'm about taking care of our police department, taking care of things. And I have a, hopefully people can see that I have a a little knowledge about me. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just not the homeless guy. Um, But looking back, if I'd have just had those questions, just homeless, 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 yes, there would be something. But I, I, I feel like I've been able to answer some stuff. Uh, some of the questions I've, I've answered them about the transportation and I like how this is laid out cause I'm being able to answer everything. So honestly, there's not a question I wish they had asked me because, okay. uh, I think I've, I've answered quite a few, um, in different aspects and different realms. So, okay. Give everybody a, a, yeah. an idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to throw out a question yeah. we didn't have on the list. Uh-oh. Um, so we have, uh, low voter turnout all yeah. the time. Yep. Um, I personally feel like our country's in the wrong direction right now. Everything's in the toilet. Uh, <laughs> just put it out there. Uh, please don't send me hate mail, but if you do, it's okay. Um, we'll just agree to disagree. Um, I wish we could be there to I, disagree. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I really wish we had more voter yeah. turnout. I, I think Putnam County in general has a very low voter turnout. What would you say to people to encourage them to vote? Yeah. You know, we're in a unique time right now, and there's a lot of people frustrated. So if you're frustrated and you vote, you, you make the change by your vote. Uh, it's hard to be frustrated and if, if you didn't, you know. Um, and I know that by experience, and I know that um, just by running into people or whatever. Just, But still, we still listen to everybody because this is our community and we care. But if you've got to get out there, we have to vote. I learned that. You know, I've learned that. And just looking at the Bible, one thing I think that's really hurt is years ago we were always told uh, Christians need to stay out of politics, mm-hmm. right? I so, oh, okay, well, we back off. No, no, just like I said earlier, David, he was a king. Mm-hmm. That's a politician. Mm-hmm. Jesus was before Pontius Pilate. He was always before the government. Paul was before the government. Moses, Samson. The judge, all those guys were at some form or fashion. So I think God wants us to be involved. And right. I wish I'd have learned that sooner, later, mm-hmm. sooner, earlier in my life. Um, and that's, you know, that's another reason why I want to, I want to run and want to vote because not vote, but want to run because we need that. We need people who are, have morals about them mm-hmm. because exactly. we're losing that. We're more concerned about other things than having morals values integrity Mm -hmm. and honesty and but also to have somebody that you can just sit down and talk to and i'm not going to get upset about your political views we're just going to agree to disagree and that is okay yes totally okay well you've worked with the youth Uh and um 
if you were to give younger Luke advice, what would you, what advice would you give yourself today? Just anything in general. Anything. Well, we go back to what I said, you know, I, I, I got away from God. I, I wish I'd had where I go to church. I wish I'd had the teaching I had at that age. I had great, I had good youth leaders, but I didn't have somebody pouring into me. Um, you know, my, my, I come from a family who my parents are divorced when I was 16. It was later. So there's that mm-hmm. bitterness right there. And, um, my, my mom and dad are great. My dad's great. My mom's great. Um, they've, 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 they've been able to reconcile and move on and everything's great. But, um, if I could go back, I would have said, you know, stay focused on God. Mm-hmm. Um, I let that and, uh, and I let that get more rooted in my heart than I did my walk with God. So to make sure I have that, I had to had that strong relationship with him then, uh, that's what I would say. Hey, I see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Stay focused here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I let I let other things get to me. So I think that happens to everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if there's anything else that you would like to share about yourself and 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 just tell tell the audience why they should vote for you, just let us know. Yeah, sure. What is that? You know, I've been telling people through this whole thing, I, I really have nothing to gain. I don't own anything in Cookville other than my house, mm-hmm. you know, my cars. Um, but I love my wife. I'm faithful to my wife. I'm faithful to my kids. I, you could probably ask anybody in the community, what do you think of Luke? And Because I hear a lot of good reports. And that, I'm not trying to be boastful in that. It's just God has really helped me mm-hmm. to get out when I was younger and to learn really quick how you treat people, what you do, and I always want to make, I will always treat people with dignity, with respect. I will listen to whatever. But, you know, again, I have nothing to gain other than to serve my community with everything I have. And I will always take everything into consideration. I will, I will make sure if I, if I don't know something, I, I don't have all the answers because if I did, then, you know, I, I, I think, um, we would be gods. Right. So, um, but I'm not that. So prayer would be involved in things I do. Getting wisdom, uh, I think you've got to do that. And the Bible even tells us to have counsel. And so I would look at that, get my counsel, and what's the best thing, Lord God. And then talk to people who maybe have called concerns on certain things and call them back and tell them, look, this is why I'd vote this way. This is what's going on. I want to be that personable. Um, my phone number is out there everywhere, and I think most people have it, but I don't, you know, I don't care if people want to have my number. It's 931-267-6686 because I want to be that one you can call. Um, I'm used to taking phone calls all hours of night with my job and what I do. So it's it's just what it is, and that's what we're here to do is serve our community. So right. that is my heart is to totally serve, not, no attachments, just to serve. Well, I'm yeah. going to ask you a few more questions. Okay. We work with young people here, yeah. and um, I ask a bunch of our Gen Z staff, um, if you could ask a city council candidate a question, uh-huh. what would it be? First question, oh. are you a gamer? <laughs> when my boy says, Daddy, come play. <laughs> uh, and so I, I play, I play, I've already promised him we're playing tonight. So, but the, yeah. yeah. The other question is, do you prefer to go out to eat or do you prefer to stay in? I really like to go out to eat because I like being around people. Um, I like to go out and see people and talk to them and, you know, that's what I like to do. I, I would rather go out. Um, my wife makes fantastic meals, so it's not that, uh, <laughs> but I, I just like to be out and about. I like to be around and involved and there are times though, I'm like, Hey, let's just stay home and let's enjoy just being home for a little bit. Cause you need that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's something that's been brought to my attention and people have encouraged me. You just make sure it's. It's, it's God, family, than everything else. Right. I, I'm, I'm aware. So I, I do like to go out and eat, though. Well, the last question uh-huh. is if you had an option for dessert and you could have cake, pie, or cobbler, which would you pick? <laughs> so it's cheesecake. That's <laughs> cake. So that's I'm, I'm, a, I'm a plain cheesecake guy. I don't, I don't like anything added to it at all plain cheesecake that is me all right well well thank you for stopping yeah. by and being on the podcast so it. we could get to know more about you and see uh what you think and what your plans are in your mind 
And thanks everyone out there for joining the podcast. Uh, we'll we'll be at the Bizapalooza at the Leslie Town Center Tuesday. If anybody wants to stop by and see us, you might get a chance to be on on camera and maybe talk about yourself some uh, if we're not booked. But thanks for joining us, and we are your local podcast about Cookville and the people, places, and businesses that make it what it is today. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. I had a lot of fun. Thank Thank you. Thank you.